All right, guys, we're here in Silverstone. We're doing our next test session with the team. A month ago, we had Navara. Here, we're all back, and we're testing everything that we've upgraded and learned from our test in Spain. This is the moment we waited for. Everything you want is right here. We're running the game now. Foot on the gas, can slow down. No. Watch the game change. Watch the game change. Watch the game change. We just got the Silverstone. We have a three days on track where we're gonna make a bunch of improvements to what we call the sensor car, which is a McLaren GT4 car. We have equipped with all the sensors like we have on our A2RL car in Abu Dhabi. So a few of the big things we're testing is having a roof mount system where we can store more of our components in a way that we can take it off of one car and put on another and make it way easier to test and ship. Once we know that it's structurally sound, then we can start putting LiDARs and cameras, eventually the entire computer stack and the batteries up there. For the last two or three months, our big focus has been sensors and perception, particularly with LiDARs, and getting really good at uh, determining our position on the track using those laser radars. Now we can have a configuration very similar to the A2RL car, where there's three LiDARs facing forward that gives you like 180 degrees of vision. In Navara, we got good with one of them, now we're gonna get good with three of them. We also have some new hardware, like the Vector Nav INS, that gives us really high quality GPS and uh, inertial navigation data. This is the same piece of hardware that is on the A2RL car. And then we also have the uh, Lambda Labs Vector 1 AI desktop. All right, so we're opening Vector 1 AI workstation. We're very excited about this because we can take this high compute, high performance compute and bring it to the track, which is right there. We have it in the garage with us and so we can be on track, we can get data and then immediately come back and update models, train new stuff. So as soon as we have this open, Marvin has some LiDAR deep learning uh, stuff that he wants to get training immediately. Good, good thing. That's all you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I know the guys are, are firing it up right now and, uh, and starting to train on some LiDAR data. So that's uh, the next three days for us. This morning we were in Brackley on a small airstrip, physically testing our roof mount system for our computers and sensors. And you know, we use 50 to 60 pounds of payload to test that the actual suction cups themselves. We heavily over engineered it, so we have probably a thousand pounds of like load we could put up there. You know, we're gonna be way under that, which is great. All right, ready to stop burn? Yep. Okay, here we go. So stage one of physical testing went well. Now we're trackside in Silverstone at the F1 pits uh, and starting to test mounting that roof mount system on the Archura. Uh, looking at the slant angle of the roof, uh, how does that play with our design we have? Uh, we removed the uh, vinyl wrap on the roof so we can just you know suck directly to the, uh, to the aluminum. That all looks great. So now we're starting to design how we mount the sensors, how we power everything and have it self-contained within the car. Uh, we just pulled out our V1 of our autonomous stack inside the McLaren. So with our new roof mount experiment, uh, we're gonna take this apart and start moving stuff into the case we have on the roof. And the big advantage there is that we can then just unsuck it from the car and move it over to another one. Way easier to transport. Uh, we're gonna upgrade uh, CPU so we have a more powerful device, as well as having three instead of one LiDAR um, and some other hardware that's closer to the A2RL car. The, the dream for us tonight would be but if everything is self-contained with that roof mount system with three LiDARs, uh, six cameras, uh, and self-contained power, we'd be really excited about that. We have a really powerful laptop in there. It was the upgrade from the NVIDIA Jetson device. If you can run it in the hotel room and we can mount it to the car, then that's what we need for success tomorrow. So there's two reasons why we switched from the Jetson to the Beast. And the first one is we had some overheating issues. And the other one is as our setup is getting more and more professional, we actually require more computational power. And that's why we switched to a quite the beefy laptop. So we just did our last stage of stability testing for the roof rack. Um, we ran into some challenges on how to have it mounted so that the under part of the roof rack's not pressing into and breaking the aluminum skin of the race car, but also having the angles so that the cameras and the LiDARs are, you know, pointing the right direction. All right, final checks. How do we feel about this? <laughs> uh, 
Figured that out. Uh, we had it mounted and just kind of played around in the paddock area. Drove as aggressively as you can in a parking lot uh, and found that the roof rack didn't move at all, which is super exciting. Uh, we also tested our, our backup safety system of like the ratchet straps around it in case any of the suction cups do fail. But so far we're feeling really excited about this approach. I would say this test went extremely well. So now we're going to make sure that all the sensors are talking and the software and hardware is ready for tomorrow. So we're a few moments away from our first test with all the sensors online, everything bolted to the real race car and going out on the real track. We're getting a lot of crazy looks from you know everyone in the paddock, uh, but a lot of people are really curious about it. Uh, so it's been cool to share that with uh, other human drivers in the pit lane. Uh, we, have, we have a DJI uh, FPV drone mounted to the front and goggles that Matt is testing right now. Uh, so we have a really cool like live view that sh we should be able to see all around the track. Three LiDAR is ready to go. Vector nav still debugging, but all in all, I think we're gonna be out on track for the first time in a few minutes. So yeah, we're here at Silverstone GP. I've got the 570 McLaren and the Artura, which has most of our autonomous equipment on it. So LiDARs, radar sensors, GPS. Uh, my job as the driver is to get it around safely and at a good enough pace to collect accurate data that we can use for the championship. So one of the big tests today is the three LiDAR setup. And so these really are the best tool that we have for perceiving the environment around us. It's like a laser radar where it's shooting out laser beams, bouncing back, and then we get really precise measurement uh, of the distance to things. And you almost get like a 3D model of the world. So our plan is we're gonna go out, we're gonna do a slow lap of the Silverstone track, and we're gonna scan the entire track. And that gives us a 3D map from all the LiDARs. And once we have that accurate 3D map, we'll go out again and see how the car compares to what it knows. Data is everything. <laughs> all of these deep learning approaches learn from the data, and the more you have, the better you run in the end. So the main plan is, once we drove two or three rounds, I grab an SSD, run towards the hotel room, because in the hotel room we have the Lambda Labs machine, which has a nice GPU on it, train some algorithms so we can evaluate them on this track tomorrow. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. I was like, ah, do they want clear laps? And I'm like, well, we had clear laps before and we'll probably do outside, inside and all that tomorrow. So I was just like, I'll try and get a load of imagery as much yep. data as we can get. We're watching on the FPV and seeing you're going to take the different angle. Yeah, I was literally like behind them the whole time. Yeah. Even, even behind them in a draft and everything. All right, so we just got back into the pit. Uh, the guys are breaking down the car. <laughs> Our engineers are very busy. Uh, 
Man, I mean, the first thing we're excited about is that physically the roof rack system worked incredibly well. We took it up to 220 kilometers an hour, very, very gradually. And we had the first person view goggles on so we could see like, just like a video game, like what the car was doing out there. The Eagle One, first test at Silverstone. So physically that worked really well. We had all three LiDARs running. Uh, we have some GPS issues that we're gonna debug uh, tonight over dinner. Um, but all in all, everyone on the team's super excited that it ran, it looks amazing. We learned a bunch from this, and so it's just time to go back and, and get back to work. All right, so we're testing live KISS ICP, which is an algorithm for localization, which is locating the car on the track. Out of the box, KISS ICP doesn't really use a pre-made map, so one of the big efforts we've had is to produce a global map of this track. Once we produce this map, we're able to localize against that map. Technically, it's a big jump to go from one to three LiDARs because we have to combine them all into one big map. Using that really high quality 3D map of the world, we can then track our movement through that 3D map of the world. And that movement is how the car is moving. And so that gives us a backup way to establish our position when GPS may drop out, when going underneath a bridge or a tunnel or something. For our differential GPS, we utilize the VectorNav VN310. We have two antennae, one here and one in the back. It actually measures from a variety of constellations to get a very accurate position. And we use this position as a sort of pseudo ground truth for our global localization using LiDAR and other sensors. When we localize using non-GPS, we need a way of comparing the accuracy of the output of those algorithms against ground truth. And that's one of the main objectives here today is to get that ground truth. Well, it's always fun getting on track because you never know what kind of issues you're going to run into. We originally had our front and rear uh, antennas for the VN310 mounted side to side, but we get out here, we finally get the entire system on the car, and we go to open the doors, and uh, lo and behold, they cannot open. So, you have to adapt, think quickly on your feet, and we did. Got them front and back, and everything worked out great. So one of the biggest issues we are facing is, is GNSS localization, specifically you require corrections for that and we had this issue all of the phases we were so far. However, we are finally trying to solve this by actively working on our own base station. The power supply actually was quite a challenge in the sense that everything needs a certain amount of power at the correct wattage and the correct you know, voltage and, and current. And so getting a battery that could supply everything and be portable for the rig to be in this modular setup uh, took quite a bit of time and investigation, but we solved it with a little bit of a bigger battery now that does all the power needs instead of multiple devices uh, powering it. So that was our solution. Testing in Silverstone is done. We got a lot accomplished. So actually everything we wanted, we got GNSS, we got multiple lighters, we got multiple cameras. Um, we're not there with machine vision cameras yet, but we have this stereo vision camera in the front. So actually all of our main goals achieved and now we look at the data and play with it. So now that we're at the end of the three days of testing, it's very easy to say like, this is a 10 out of 10, we accomplished our goals, but it wasn't like that on the first day when we're like in the garage until 1 a.m. and things weren't working and there's been some challenges, but all in all, like we accomplished what we came here for, which was to test our new systems, to test our new hardware, um, and to have enough uh, data from those systems so that in three weeks when we go to Navarra, Spain again, we can make those improvements asynchronously, remotely, without having to have our hands on the car. And we can optimize and refine our software to match you know, the innovation that we created in the last three days on the hardware side. So up next, we're going back to Navarra, Spain. We already have data from that track, so that's very helpful. So we've already 3D mapped it. And so now we can go back with our advances in the software side and take it to the next level. So that's the checkered flag for our test at Silverstone. We learned so much, we made so many improvements as a team. 
Up next, we have two or three weeks of improving our hardware and our software, and then we're back on track in Spain. Our whole roof mount sensor stack is gonna have a bunch of upgrades then. So, catch you on the next one.